Konnichiwa. Um, so yeah, it has been a couple of weeks since I've done one of these, but I decided to do one on um, Japanese TV. I was actually reading um, an article in uh, Rocket News 24, and I'll put the link in the description below. It's actually really interesting. It was all about um, why is it that Westerners don't appreciate Japanese TV, and it gives reasons why they should. And I was thinking about this, and I thought, actually, yeah, why don't they appreciate Japanese TV? Because I love it. I think it's brilliant. I think it's because we're not actually exposed to all that much of it. I remember growing up, it was probably just um, Takeshi's Castle. Now, a lot of you probably would know the sort of the Takeshi of Takeshi's Castle as um, <laughs> the, uh, Takeshi Kitano or um, Beat Takeshi. Um, he's um, the really horrible school teacher in Battle Royale in the film. But anyway, that's probably like the only other place you know him from, but it's from Takeshi's Castle. But he's actually a really famous comedian, director, writer, everything. Um, and the only other thing I could think of growing up as well that was on telly, I mean, I was born in the mid-80s, and the only thing I was consciously aware of was back in maybe the late 80s, early 90s, sumo wrestling. I'm pretty sure it's the reason my dad's got a bad back now, because I used to challenge him to sumo wrestling. But I remember it being on the TV, it must have been on over the weekend. And I was thinking, yeah, okay, if that's the only exposure that you're going to get to Japanese TV, I mean, Takeshi's Castle, if you don't know what it is, it's basically this crazy game show where you start off with, like, a hundred contestants and they have to do all this really crazy stuff, like riding a giant rice bowl down a really slippery slope and trying to run across a river of stepping stones and some of them give way and then you fall in the river and things like that. And basically lots of people get hurt and it was supposed to be really funny. And it actually ran in Japan from the mid-80s to about 1990. And the very final showdown was basically about half a dozen contestants that had made it to the end who had to try and defeat the Imperial Guard. And all these like little buggies and you'd go around and try and use laser guns and water pistols and all sorts of things to try and save all the other person's buggy, basically, um, and then win. And then if you won, I think like I only ever saw like two episodes where people won and you didn't get anything for it. There was no prize, no money or anything. You just kind of had the glory of defeating the imperial guard and that was pretty much it and then show ends it's absolutely mad and over here back in the sort of late 90s it was um it was narrated by craig charles who you'll know from things like red dwarf and stuff like that anyway sort of digressing a little bit there if that's the only exposure you've ever had in your entire life to japanese tv i guess you're going to think it's a bit mental and we look at all these sort of variety shows and game shows that come out of Japan and we think, hmm, that's a little bit weird. But if you think about it, it's kind of because we don't get the cultural differences. Um, just like over here, stand-up comedians, for example, have to work incredibly hard to get on TV and they have to try and appeal to the broadest possible audience, otherwise they lose their TV places. So you get tend to get a lot of things like slapstick, things that you know, there's usually like a straight man and an sort of idiot, gruff idiot, um, who basically gets himself like walloped over the head quite a lot or something like that because it's that kind of comedy that really appeals out there. So once you understand the background to that, you understand what it is they're trying to do. Um, I guess the other good thing about Japanese TV is actually you can learn a lot about not just cultural differences but you can learn a lot about history you can learn a lot about how the law works if you watch a wide variety of programs you can actually get this stuff from the television programs so i mean for example you can watch anime and j dramas and you might have one that sort of focuses on the law so you get an understanding of how the law system works you might have an anime for example there's quite a common theme of people from today going back in time so you might end up sort of learning a little bit about history okay so you're not going to learn the exact facts because a lot of it is changed up for the anime and the entertainment purposes but i think you'd still learn a fair amount about it it's, it's a starting point you'd, you'd at least get an understanding i think also what's interesting is seeing how they view us if you take something like Black Butler, for example, phenomenally popular, it's set in Victorian England, and I've got to say that the creator, of course it was originally a manga before it was an anime, the creator, Yana Toboso, has absolutely done her homework. It's absolutely brilliant. She's really got the dress sense down, she's got certain events that happened in our history down, and they might not necessarily be quite in order. There's storylines that haven't come up in the anime yet, but certainly in the manga, which are things like the Campania 
boat which hits an iceberg it was clearly supposed to be the titanic but it happens maybe 30 years before 30 40 years before the titanic actually hit the iceberg but she's clearly done her homework and also just little things like how they view our cultural things like there's one storyline coming up that i'm hoping will get made into the map into the anime as well which is all about cricket and she's done her homework about cricket and it's quite interesting to see how the japanese view us and our history and our culture um i think the other thing about watching anime in particular as well as you can have either the dub or the sub and i'm not going to get into the argument of double sub because i think there's valid points and valid arguments for both uh, my fiance for example likes the dubbed versions because he said he doesn't want to have to read subtitles while he's watching it and quite often we watch anime while we're eating and it's difficult to sort of glance down at your food and glance back up and read subtitles and i understand that and i'm with him on that one but i think if you're watching them with the english subtitles um, and the same goes for J-dramas as well. I think you start to learn common words and phrases and it's a great way to understand how the language is constructed because it's not constructed in the same way as English at all. It's almost backwards or jumbled up in, to our minds. Obviously it makes perfect sense for the Japanese. Um, but you kind of get a sense about how the language is constructed, like I say, common words, common phrases, and just how to pronounce things. So I think it's really important to help you learn the language a bit i think the other thing is as well you kind of especially with j dramas that are set in real places like in tokyo or ever if you're planning on visiting you can have a look at these locations and think oh okay so when i go and visit that's what that looks like so when you go it's not like alien to you at all it's actually very common and you get a sense of how people dress how people speak what people need to do in certain social situations which i think can give you a good starting point i'm not saying it's how you should learn I'm saying it's a good starting point and I think it's very important I remember being told that you know why do you want to go to Japan it'd be such a culture shock yeah yeah if you don't have even the basic knowledge of what's going on and I love my J dramas I absolutely love them I think they're brilliant I mean I've just finished watching Bloody Monday and um okay there's going to be a running theme here basically most of my J drama the J dramas I watch are because I've got a favourite actor um, to Kira Sato, but um, there's nothing wrong with that. If you find an actor or a writer or whoever, someone that you really sort of like to focus on, then I think that's a good thing because you'll find out, you'll watch all their works and they quite often, they're in totally different things. So like Bloody Monday is like basically trying to stop terrorists and things like that. And then I've got this one, which is called Bitter Blood and that one um, stars to Kira Sato as well. And it's like, that one's got, it's kind of like comedy drama and stuff like that, and it's, but it has got people who are playing police officers, for example, so you're going to get some sense of what the law is and stuff like that. Um, but then, of course, you've got ones that are set in schools, you've got ones that are set in like just everyday life, and uh, you know, you're just going to get a sense of what it's like. Um, but like I say, I think it's really great for the very basics of learning language, for culture and just getting an understanding so i think there's a lot to be said for japanese tv and in this day of the internet you can get anime on tap through things like crunchyroll through netflix stuff like that you can also find a lot of these j dramas quite easily you can either download them from reputable websites i hasten to add but you can get hold of them or uh you can buy them i mean like i've got bitter blood here i managed to get this one from ebay um, this one starring Harry Miura of this last Cinderella, I got that from eBay. I went um, on Play Asia and I managed to get uh, Mei Chan no Shitsuji. I can't find my words out today. By the way, voice is bad, hay fever still. Mei Chan no Shitsuji. And I've got loads of others as well that I managed to get off eBay. I've managed to get them off Play Asia, off CD Japan. So they're really, really easy to get hold of. There's no excuse. And they're not very expensive either. Each one has only cost me maybe a tenner. If that even, that's kind of roughly what I pay for them usually. So you can enjoy a wide range of Japanese TV and, you know, give it a go. It's You'll find something that you enjoy. It's good for the culture. It's good for the history. It's good for learning about life in Japan. And it's great for learning the language. It's very underrated. Give it a shot. I know there's some mad stuff out there, but hey, 
we live in a country that has things like X Factor and Britain's Got Talent and stuff, so we're hardly anyone's to talk. Give it a shot. You might even like it. That's it for now. Sayonara.